So row by row processing, something else not to do. Here's a really classic piece of PLSQL, mostly because it's also using the same department employees that we all know so well. I pass in a department ID and the new salary for the employees. I find all the employees in the department, and for every one of those employees, I have some complex adjustment calculation, and then I update the employee with their new salary. Now, this really does highlight some of the really nice things about the PLSQL language. I've got this wonderful cursor for loop, so it does the opens, the fetches, the closes for me. I've got the ability to write native SQL directly in my code. My PLSQL code in general is very readable. This is really nice stuff, and this is the sort of code that should never appear in your production applications anymore, unless you're talking about a really minimal volume of, of data. If you've got 100 rows in the, in the entire table, no big deal. Thousands, tens of thousands, millions, this will be a disaster from the standpoint of performance. Don't do it. Now, what I mean specifically, and I'll, obviously we'll only get to a part of this today, is what you want to watch out for are DML statements inside loops. That's the killer. So why is that the killer? So what should you not do? Row by row execution of the same DML statement, essentially repetitive SQL execution. It's simple, it's elegant, but it's potentially very inefficient. And the problem is that it involves too many context switches. The solution from the, in the world of PLSQL is array processing using bulk collect and for all. Bulk collect and for all are just about the most important features added to PLSQL since Oracle 8i. And I imagine a number of you are using them, and you may not learn anything new in this presentation, but I'll be covering lots more nuances in my full training. So let's take a uh, closer look. We talk about, or Oracle talks about, how tightly integrated SQL and PLSQL are. And they are. But still, under the covers, under the covers of the syntax, there's still a lot of processing going on that, that shows that they're not all that tightly integrated. The bottom line is that there are separate engines to run PLSQL statements and SQL statements. And when you run a PLSQL code, whenever it hits a DML statement or any kind of SQL statement, it switches the context over to SQL. It passes the statement over there so that the statement, the SQL engine, can process the SQL statement and then pass information back. So it goes back and forth, back and forth. And each one of those back and forths is a context switch. And historically, context switches have had a lot of overhead. So if I have a thousand uh, rows, a thousand rows fetched in my cursor, I'm going back and forth a thousand times. And that can lead to a lot of overhead. So what Oracle did in Oracle 8i is add the bulk processing capabilities with bulk collect and for all. And the bottom line is that now, when Oracle hits the for all statement instead of a for loop or any kind of loop, it says, wait a minute, I see that you've got a thousand updates. I'm going to generate those thousand updates right now. I'm going to pass them over to the SQL engine in a single context switch. In the SQL engine, all the same stuff's going to happen that happened before. If I had a thousand updates before, I've got a thousand updates now. And then it, so it does those thousand updates without going back and forth, and then returns control to the PLSQL engine. So there are many fewer context switches, same SQL behavior, vastly improved performance. So the goal is straightforward. Reduce the number of context switches and you improve performance. To do this, essentially Oracle bundles up those requests and then passes them over with that single context switch. We use for all with inserts, updates, deletes, and merges, though merges are generally not that fast with for all, so mostly inserts, updates, and deletes. And the bottom line is that in general, you're moving from collections to tables. Collections are Oracle's array-like structures, and they're critical for you to know about. Hopefully you all are aware of them and use them all the time. Bulk collect speeds up queries. So you can use them with implicit, explicit queries, static and dynamic, and they move data from tables into collections. Let's take a look at some quick examples, and I'll finish up with my last topic. Don't write spaghetti code. Just have to write the, find the right file. Now, I won't bother running through all this code. I'll just show it to you briefly and show you the kind of results you can expect. But I essentially have created a parts table with part number and part name. And I want to do inserts into that table. So here's an example of doing row by row inserting. I've populated a couple of collections with all the data that I want. And then, so for example, 10,000, 100,000. And I'm going to do those 100,000 inserts. And then I'm going to try it with for all. And in this case, the conversion is really simple. Change for to for all, get rid of the loop, because it's not a loop. 
and I'm done. I've converted my code. Now, it's never that simple when you're talking about production code, but in this case, to simply demonstrate the difference in performance, the conversion is quite straightforward. So one for all statement versus 100,000 different inserts, and I've got my special little timer package, and I'll show you how to get all this code, by the way, as well, when I get to the end. And this will tell me how much time has elapsed between the start and the end. And when I've run this on 11G, most recently, here's the results I got. 100,000 rows inserted row by row, 3.26 seconds, which is pretty good. If you run this in Oracle 10, you're likely to see something like 10 seconds versus 3, because Oracle 11 has gotten that much faster in general. But here's the amazing part. 100,000 rows inserted with for all, 0 0.08 seconds. That's nothing short of amazing. It actually competes really favorably with insert selects. You can see here it's a little bit faster doing an insert select entirely, in other words, entirely native SQL operations, not even using for all. But wow, it's right up there with it. And insert select is incredibly efficient. Bulk collect is similar. You, you won't, you, you'll see improvements in performance. It won't be as extreme, uh, but you will see dramatic improvements in performance. So if, you're, if you've got a program that's running in, say, 15, 20 minutes, and it's a big, complicated program, but you know, it's still taking a long time. And your manager walks up to you and says, listen, Steve, and that, that program that's taken 20 minutes, I really need it to run in like a minute or two minutes. In other words, like an order of magnitude improvement. The first thing you should do is look for opportunities to use for all. And that's going to be primarily at DML statements executed inside a loop. Let's take a look quickly at a comparison of the before and after using this technology. So CFL to bulk zero. It's similar to what I just showed you before, taking the department and salary for all the employees in that department, insert a row into a history table, do some other stuff, and then update. So we've got multiple DML statements inside my for loop. And again, this is a really nice, compact, readable style of coding. And notice it also says, look, if anything goes wrong, trap the error, log it, and then keep going. So it allows us to continue past exceptions. But it's really, really slow. So what I should do is look to convert this to a bulk collect and for all scenario. And just to give you a sense of a little bit of the reality, here's a version of that same program using bulk collect and for all. And the first thing to notice is that my initial program was 30 lines long. My converted program is 130, 140 lines long. It's much, much longer than it was before. And it's way more complicated. We've got to declare collections based on the individual columns in my table. I need to do my fetch. Here's my bulk collect. I need to do my for all statement. I need to tell it, look, if anything goes wrong, save the exception information, and then notify my update, my update statement that you can't do an update in any of the rows that the insert failed on. We don't have time to go into all the details today. What I wanted to give you a sense of with this function technology is that it's incredibly performant. If you're looking for, quote unquote, a quick, low-hanging fruit way to get dramatic improvements in performance. The first thing you want to do is look for for all and bulk collect opportunities. The next thing to be aware of is that it's no simple transformation to make. You will see your code get much more complicated. There are lots and lots of nuances to keep in mind, like when do you need to convert loops to bulk collect? In some cases, Oracle will automatically optimize, automatically optimize your queries to run like bulk collect if you want to know how many rows were modified by each DML statement, in other words, the whole thing modified 1,000 rows, but how much did each individual statement take? How do you figure that out? And what happens when errors are raised? When you're executing DML, all sorts of problems occur. And it'd be nice to be able to tell it to keep going or stop or what do you do with the errors. And these are all different nuances uh, of for all and bulk collect, which I'll talk about at my training. But I sure can't talk about all this now. So hopefully I've at least given you the flavor and the key thing, which is that if you ever see DML inside a loop, you're running in the same statement over and over again. You need to optimize that with for all.